let's take a look at a, a sterification, but an intramolecular sterification. So we are in acidic condition, so H plus is catalyst. It's got a carboxylic acid and an alcohol that's inside one molecule. So we've done where there's a alcohol as a solvent. We could still, we could put a solvent here. It doesn't really matter. You could say, oh, ethanol is a solvent. But at the end of the day, an intramolecular reaction is necessarily faster than an intermolecular reaction. So molecule will react with something inside itself first than it would with, right? It's easier to have, it's harder to have two things run into each other than to have one molecule find a way to react with itself. So what's the first step gonna be? We're in acidic condition, so the first step is gonna be protonation. And we protonate the, carb, the oxygen of the carbonyl group, right? Will you protonate these? This alcohol, sure, you probably could, but it's just not going to lead to products. And this is probably the most electron-rich oxygen anyways, because you can think about resonance structures to make that more electron-rich. Okay, so what that does, why do we do that, that protonation step? That makes this carbon of the carbonyl group that much more reactive, right? It increases its reactivity. That's why we do this. So we protonate. Now we have the alcohol with, with, that is with, actually within the molecule. So it reacts with the carbon in the carbonyl group that we've just made more reactive. So that's an addition step. We're adding something in. Got to be careful here to make sure we don't number, maybe number our carbons. And oxygens, one, two, three, four, five. So we're making a five member ring. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we gotta make sure we add stuff that was all on there. So what's the oxygen still had that H on it? Carbon one had a OH on it. And it also has another OH on it. And I need to remember, of course, to balance my charge. So where should there be a plus charge? On five. On five. Very good. Great. So now we have a tetrahedral intermediate. Tetrahedral intermediate, we ask ourselves, do we have any good leaving groups? And our best leaving group is actually the thing we just added. So instead of kicking that off, we wanted to do a proton transfer. So we're going to lose one of these OHs as water. So we can do a proton transfer. I'll show it with the arrows. Why not? You could also just write proton transfer, that's fine. We show the arrows, show both arrows. All that's all this is doing, right, is making one of these a better leaving group as water. All right, these Fischer esterification reactions are all dehydrations, you lose water. So now we're here, we've again we have the same tetrahedral intermediate as before. With the, now we've moved that hydrogen around. So now we need to write esterification as reactions of Fischer esterification, so that's a dead giveaway. What kind, of, what kind of functional group are we making at the end of the day? An ester. Right? Ideally, you'd be able to look at this and immediately draw the product. And that would help you right, do the mechanism. You, might not, you should be able to do that. Right? That way you know exactly where you need to go. So we probably all know we're going to lose. This is going to get kicked off. But then to regenerate a catalyst, we also lose that H at the same time. Right? This is similar to what we did in lab when we did that fish we did a fish certification. Right. But now this is a little bit different because we've actually made a cyclic ester. These are called lactones. And of course generated water. One, two, three, four. Five. Oh yeah, sorry. This of course would be the the final step is a Elimination step, which also is coupled to a deprotonation step too, I guess. There's elimination and deprotonation there at the same time.